What's up, Internet? This is Matt Gibson from Guitar Players at Google Plus, and I'm here with Seth Morrison from Skillet backstage at Winter Jam 2015. Uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about uh, Seth and all he's doing with Skillet, guitars, and what have you. And so, uh, and we've got some of your questions here you guys were asking. Um, I'm going to give Seth a chance to answer them. So, uh, how's it going, Seth? It's going great. Thanks for coming, man. How's, how, how's the tour going? It's going, uh, it's very well. We are, gosh, we only have a few weeks left at this point, so we're, we're, yeah. com we're coming down the back end of it here, and um, it's been great. It's, uh, we did this tour three years ago, and um, it was one of my favorite tours we've ever done, and, and equal, equally, if not more as much this time, it's, it stands up there with one of my favorite tours. So Yeah, I, I'm, I'm a big Winter Jam fan myself. I've, yes. been, I've been to about three of them, I think. Okay. Very so, cool. You know, it's a great. It's, it's, a fun, it's a fun night. You know, it's um, a lot of different styles for different people, and uh, yeah, it's a great night. Yeah, yeah. man. So um, let's let's talk guitar a little bit, man. That's what we're here Love for. It. Guitar players <laughs> at Google Plus. We got twenty-two thousand uh, guitar gearheads out there that uh, you know hang out on Google Plus, yeah. and um, you know the uh, you're our featured artist for the month of uh, March. And really appreciate well, you. Uh, appreciate yeah, thanks you so much. That. I appreciate it. And that. Um, anyway, so uh, let's talk about guitars. Paul Reed Smith, right? That's right. That's yeah. your uh, that's your main uh, electric that's guitar. That's it. Yeah. So how did that happen? Were you just sitting in your basement? Paul Reed Smith calls you up and says, "Hey, want to um, play a guitar?" Well, actually, I, I grew up a Paul Reed Smith fan. I you know I started playing when I was about 11, 12, you know, sixth grade somewhere around in there, and. Uh, I was a. I grew up a really big Mark Tremonti fan. Um, oh yeah. From Ultra Bridge yeah, Creed. Creed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, I was in sixth grade, junior high, and I was like, oh gosh, I'll never be able to afford, you know, afford one of those things. So I grew up. Yeah, I got up, that story. Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. Yeah. You know, I grew up, and I was. It was a dream to even own, own a Paul Reed Smith. Um, and when I was about twenty. I, I bought my first one. Um, yeah. It was just. A, it was a single cut, twenty-five inch scale, and still have that thing I, I keep it at home but um so you know when i joined skillet in 2011 um they, they were already prs artists beforehand um but it, it, it kind of just worked out perfectly because if if they wouldn't even if they wouldn't have been you yeah, know i would have yeah, yeah. that that was it was my dream to to be a prs artist you know and to and to, and i've now been able to uh you know, be, be able to work hand in hand with, you know, my A and R people over there, Bev and Rich. That's cool. And uh, I've been able to go to the factory a couple times and see the hands that, you know, build your guitars and put the little bird inlays in the neck. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. it's 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 very surreal for me. So. so so do the birds add tone to the guitar, or is that that's just probably sure. not. <laughs> I no. mean, they, you may hear a little uh, a twerp little, every now yeah, and then. No, no. no, but honestly, though, the birds. Everybody always is at, asks, "Do I want the bird inlays or the dot?" I'm like, "Man, if you're getting a PRS, you gotta have the bird inlays, yeah, you know." Yeah. It's that's, and that's it. It's classic that's for right. sure. Yeah, definitely. So uh, Mesa Boogie, right? Yeah, dude, I'm a huge Mesa fan. Um, you got the shirt got under the shirt. there. Yes. Same same deal there. You know, I grew um, grew up well back in the you know early 2000s when. When rock was hitting really hard in the mainstream pie, everybody used Mesa, you know. Yeah. Mark used Mesa, so I. Uh, yeah, I grew up wanting. Yeah. You know, it's like it's just it, Mesa is the cool guitar it's company. Awesome, yeah. It's for rock I love metal. It. The I mean, rectifier, it's awesome. man. It's timeless and it's uh, it's yeah, made a, a staple rec. sound. I yeah, got yeah. A little mini rec in the studio and. Uh, Twenty five watts, right? Yeah. yeah. The thing, I'm, I'm telling you, I could play that thing through a four twelve. Mm -hmm, that's and it. And you would not believe how loud that little head that's is. That's all you need, man. I mean, it's beautiful. So yeah, the, what, do you, the, what do you play out of on stage? Yeah, well, the triple, the triple rec was my first ever Mesa I owned. Yeah. Um, and it's an old two-channel. I have a couple two-channel. I have a dual and a triple at home. Um, out here, I use the uh, three-channel dual dual rec. Yeah. With a, uh, I've actually I've actually changed up my rig a little bit. Um, the Mesa I've used for for years since yeah. I've been in the band. I, yeah. It's a Mesa dual rec through a. A boogie, uh, the traditional 412, the smaller one, not yeah. the, not the oversized one. I, yeah, I like the oversized ones, but I find yeah, I got an oversized rec cab. Yeah, I, I have, still have one. Yeah, I still yeah, own yeah. one. Uh, I I found that the smaller. I talked to Tim, the key yeah, boogie. Yeah, yeah, you know Tim's Tim, and guy. we uh, we're going back and forth on it. Uh, and he's like, man, try the traditional ones. You know, guys like um, a lot of metal guys like John Petrucci, they use the smaller ones. Yeah, uses the 12s. Get, 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 well, the, yeah. That smaller 412, the traditional, gives you a little more. Um, 
just a little more punch, a little more. It's not as woofy as the as the oversize, so it's a little yeah, bit yeah, more yeah. punchy, mid rangey. I mean, it's maybe for miking. Yeah, for yeah, you know. I mean, a more I mean, the average ear is probably not going to hear the, the, yeah. the you know the difference, but it just feels a little bit different. And actually, now on this tour, what I've I've started doing that's kind of the uh, you know that Mesa. You know what a rectifier does? It's it's the it's that big fat scooped kind of high gain. Um, and I just add PRS started making an amp called the Archon. I don't know mm -hmm. if, you, if you've heard of that. No, I've heard that one. Oh my, it's it's great. It's a great, great amp. It's geared toward the rock and metal mm -hmm. community. So what I'm doing now is I'm kind of um, I'm kind of EQ. I, I always explain it to people. I kind of EQ the rectifier. Like if you if you you know if you're looking at a graphic EQ, yeah. the rectifier kind of sits you know like a like a U like a, scoop. Like a U kind like of a that scoop. Traditional metal They're kind of naturally scoop. scooped anyways, yeah, yeah, but yeah. you know. So that's kind of doing that, and then um, the Archon, they sent me out a 6L6 and an EL34 version, mm -hmm. and uh, I, lo I love both of them. I love the 6L6, but um, just for the sake of what I'm doing out here, you know, the, the rectifiers, it's, it's doing the 6L6 thing. So the Archon, uh, I went with the EL34s, it gives mm -hmm. a bit more of that Marshall kind of... Uh, mid-range growl yeah, 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 kind yeah. of thing mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so it's really cool it kind of so you got the mesa doing that thing like that and then the archon kind of comes in and hits it hits it right in the yeah it kind know, of fills in all the fills it in the i love blending two amps together you that, know that's the way to go man it's great yeah. and, and the, i've been really 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 impressed with the archon and how it blends with the rectifier so it's it's a good combo I yeah love man it. and i'm running that through a uh, a prs 412 vintage 30s and and everything any particular speakers that you're fond of, or you just you know I, or? um, I like vintage thirty. You know that's what Boogie uses, factory vintage thirties. Yeah. PRS uses the vintage thirties. I really, I also like what the what Marshall uses, the G twelve T seventy fives. Those are cool too. I, I like those. Um, and just depend. You know, for high gain stuff, I like vintage thirties. For in Voxes or Voxy type stuff, I like. I kind of like a combo of maybe like a V30 and an Alnico Blue yeah, or yeah, yeah, yeah. something like that. But yeah, for, for gainy stuff, I think V30s are about the safest, <laughs> the safest bet. Yeah, yeah. Well, okay, so Guitar Heroes. Let's, let's move from gear to okay. Guitar Heroes. All right. This is my favorite subject. I don't know why, but I've always liked talking about Guitar Heroes. Oh, yeah, you know, absolutely. Like I, my big influence, you know, was George Lynch. That's who I, okay. that's what made me pick up the guitar when I was a teenager. And, yeah. You know, it's just... You know, I loved his tone. I loved. It was the first time I ever heard another rock musician put feeling into a guitar that that tugged mm -hmm. my heartstrings. You know, totally. So, uh, how about you, man? What do you? What I kind of went. Eyes? Yeah, I went through. Um, I'm a very broad. I, I like everything I mean, across I am the too. spectrum. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, it start. Like I said, it started with with Mark. Uh, yeah. Tremania. You know, yeah. I, I kind of was in those preteens, right when the. The huge Creed album came out, the Human Clay album. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. that's when I kind of hump, hopped on board. And then when Ultra Bridge came out, that you know, as a guitar player, that was mm -hmm. more fun. You know, yeah, yeah, he, yeah, he yeah. really got to show off. Yeah, yeah, it was like yeah, Creed was a little yeah, more than the yeah, box, yeah, for and then sure. He's like, you know what? I'm tired. I want to have fun gonna, now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I, I, I yeah. still to this day like him a lot. Um, then I went through a John Petrucci phase, you know. The dream Theater. The dream Gotta Theater. Love, love Dream Theater. Um, Did you see his rig rundown for Mesa yet? I've seen a lot. He does like, I feel like yeah, he, he does, does one like every one week. Every, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> But yeah. I, have, I have seen him. It's, it's an intense yeah, I, rig. Yeah, I like, the new one's pretty cool. Okay. okay, I will, from Mesa. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so I went through, I like him, I was, you know, Stevie Ray, and then I also like guys like Brad Paisley and Keith Urban. Yeah. Um, yeah. The Edge, you know, it's a little bit of a different area as far as playing but what he does with delays and effects i oh, love yeah. the edge and uh yeah that, that's I, I guess that's some of my main ones there's a there's a session player a session country player in nashville his name's brent mason i really really like to haven't heard of him I've he's a he's a, he kind of he kind of started that whole kind of chicken picking kind of country thing brent and mason. he's yeah you know, I was he's, thinking he's about great. writing that down, and then I'm like, wait a minute, we're doing a video interview. Yeah. You can go back and you check can, that out. You can out. go back and, and check, yeah. check it. <laughs> exactly. That's awesome. So, uh, let's see. Okay, so well, before Skillet, right? Mm -hmm. You're just down in your basement playing guitar. John hears you on the road and says, dude, that guy is awesome, and just knocks on your door. Is that how that works? Uh, I guess, I don't know, sort of. Uh, <laughs> I was, uh, I actually, right before this, I, I was playing as much as I could. Um playing for some friends and not full-time or anything, yeah. um, you know, just 
just trying to get my feet wet kind of thing. I was working for my dad back in my hometown in Wheelersburg, Ohio. Yeah. Um, that's what I was doing for a job. And I heard, I heard about the Skillet gig uh, through, through a friend. And I was like, I was like, surely they've already found someone, you know, a high profile gig like that. It, yeah. When you hear about it, it's gone. Kind it's, like, of thing. it's like asking out that girl that you think no one else, that she's just going <laughs> to say no. And then yeah. you're the only person yes. that's ever asked her out. Kind of, like kind that. of. Yeah. So I, yeah. you know, I didn't really expect, didn't really expect much. So I, I had, a, I had a mutual friend that, um, it's a total God thing how, how he was placed in my life. But, uh, we'd been good friends for, uh, Four, four or five years. He plays. He actually plays guitar for an, a, another artist called Toby Mac. Yeah, yeah, um, I know Toby yeah, Mac. Yeah, we've been real good friends for for a long time. So Tim, um, I I text him. I'm like, man, I just I just heard about this. Can you see what you can find out? Because they yeah, yeah, yeah. Skillet and Toby had just toured together, um, you know, months before. Yeah. So uh, I was like, man, see what you can find out. And he's like, oh man, okay, sure. So um, before I even heard back from Tim, I had an email from. From uh, his name's Scotty, our production manager. Yeah. Um, I had an email from this guy saying, Skill, as some of you may have heard, Skillet's looking for a new guitar player, and yeah. uh, it, it laid out everything that they wanted to see. You know, send send video of yourself playing, you know, uh, these songs and these solos. Uh, you know, very very, mm -hmm. very streamlined what they wanted in pictures and a bio. So. I, uh, man, I got it on it that night. I, I made my video and get, sent everything in. I, they later told me, I think I was the first or second to send, to send something in. But, um, yeah, I uh, sent everything in. And uh, they they had had someone else in or out, out on the road trying them out for about a week yeah. and a half or so. And um, and uh, so I just thought, well, okay, okay. I did did what I thought I was supposed to do. I, th I mm. felt like I was supposed to send this stuff in and it's fine, it didn't work out. And then, well, the guy they had out, it didn't go so well. So uh, <laughs> a week and a half later, I uh, I was at work for my dad and get a random call from a random number. Um, didn't answer it, because I don't answer yeah, a random yeah. phone Yeah, yeah, it's like, oh, it's a telemarketer. <laughs> yeah, exactly, it was a yeah. New York number. So I'm like, yeah. so I was standing there, I was, like, I was like, I need to call this number back. You know, I just felt like I need to call this back, that was weird. Called it back and it was a uh, Scotty production manager's voicemail. I was like, "Oh gosh, what's this guy want?" You know, because I knew who he was. And uh, yeah. so he calls me back, and it's funny now, but uh, that whole conversation, he was in bad service somewhere, and mm -hmm. I couldn't really hear anything he was saying. Yeah. Other than when can you fly out? That's yeah, yeah, that's yeah, the yeah. only thing I heard out of a. That's 10 all minute, you need to hear, bro. That's all I heard out of a <laughs> ten-minute conversation. Didn't know what he was wanting. So that night, yeah. about a. Uh, it's like it was after midnight, twelve thirty. Him and him and John, uh, him and John called me on a conference call and and uh, said, "Yeah, we need you to come out and uh, let's see how this goes," kind of thing. So yeah. I, we were we we're out on a tour with uh, Stone Sour. Yeah. Theory of a Dead Man and Hailstorm. See, Stone Sour, that's uh, some of the guys. From... Yeah, that's Corey Taylor. From yeah, Slipknot. Corey Taylor. From Corey Slipknot. and Jim. That's Root. Right. That's right. Well, Jim was in the band then. Yeah. Um, yep. So yeah, we were out on a, it was called the Avalanche Tour with those guys, and uh, I have that album, but I'm old, so I gotta, yeah, <laughs> I gotta, I gotta, you gotta think about that. You yeah, know? I, yeah, I, I understand. Yeah. So, yeah, I finished the tour and it uh, went well. And here I am, four years later. <laughs> yeah, dude. It does, I mean, it doesn't seem like four years. Does it, it really, it doesn't. I mean, it does and it doesn't because we've been over those four years. I've been, we've toured around the world, you know, Europe to Russia and. We, we we tour heavy, so when I really stop and think, I'm like, oh wow, it doesn't seem like four years, but we've been a lot of places, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's, yeah, it's um, crazy, but yeah, it's, it just seems like last month it kind of happened. So b before Skillet, had you played arenas or anything like that before? Not really. No, 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 nothing. This is there a huge learning curve, or is it just getting up there I, I didn't, and just doing your I thing? Just had, I was thrown into the fire, man. Yeah, you'd <laughs> be like, like the was a time right? for a learning curve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, uh, as soon as I came out, you know, I was, um, a former guitar player came back out for about a week and helped, uh, you know, showed me the parts to the T and uh, played while I was learning. So I was in the back lounge of the bus just practicing for probably 10, 12 hours a day. I mean, my fingers were, were, yeah. Ble ble literally bleeding yeah, yeah, yeah. you know they would bust open I'd super glue them so yeah. I could practice I mean, you know the straight up that's, rock and roll that's man. the way you do it so uh, 
At least you ain't, yeah. you know, Tony Iommi, you know, oh, at least God. you still have yeah, your fingers. I still have them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. See, that, that's kind of how it was, man. I was just thrown in, uh, I just had to do it, you know? It's just, there wasn't time for learning curve. So. Yeah, that's, that's, the still, best, that's the best way to learn how to swim, right? Have your dad throw you in the pool. That's it, man. That's totally You're how like, it was. <laughs> well, son, you better, you better start paddling, right? Yeah. That's exactly. That's a good analogy. <laughs> well, cool, man. Well, here, hold this. So okay. I, I got some questions yes, from yes. Uh, uh, fans here. Okay. So, uh, you know, guitar players at Google Plus. We got a few people ask, you know, some questions, yeah. and uh, you can be the mic guy for this. Part. Yes. Okay. All right. So we got May Thorne. As he says, Seth is one of my guitar heroes. So cool, you get to interview him. <laughs> Just tell him I said hi. Ha ha. So what was his hi. name? May Thorneth. May, May, what's up, May Thorneth? Thanks for, uh, thanks for checking in with us. All right, we got Mockman 1970. Matt Gibson, you should ask him what his inspiration for playing is and how long he's been playing. We didn't really cover that. So yeah, that's that? a good question. From, From Mockman. Mockman 1970. I, uh, I grew up in a very, uh, a very musical, musical family. Yeah, uh, yeah, my, yeah. my parents had a... Uh, like a country gospel group that traveled around on weekends from when I was born until I was like 12. So, so, so let me, I don't know how old you are, but did you watch Heath? Did your family watch Heath Hall? I'm country. sure my dad did. I, yeah. I'm old. So. I know what that is. I yeah, know that show. You know what that is. Yeah. Okay. I watched that all the way yes. when I was a kid. I love that show. I'm sure he knows what it Boy is. Clark. Yeah. Yes, okay. All right. So, yeah, I was, I was on the road with them. Um, and my dad plays about everything with strings. You know, he plays yeah. steel guitar, anything. Mandolin, so. That kind of yeah, That's electric. Cool. So he was he's one of my big inspirations for sure. Um Yeah, I, I, yeah, for that, that's probably it. You know, I grew up around it, so. Yeah, your family. Yeah. That's cool, man. All right. So uh Paul Reed Smith, um Kyle D asked, you know, why did you choose Paul Reed Smith? We already covered that, Kyle. Sorry, but <laughs> what's up? Um Okay, motives. Let's see. Jacob Ostima said, "Yes, asking what his motives are for playing." You know, we kind of talked about that a little bit. Yeah, I, I think uh, to you know, for for doing being out on the road too, it's um, it's not an easy lifestyle. You know, you're going no, away from family, so it is. I'm a retired military guy. Yeah, you know, you can you tell? Yeah, yeah, totally. I got, it's the wig, dude. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're we're you know we're we're gone a lot of the year, 260 days last year. So I, I think it's um, it can wear, but it's hard on the family, well, right? Yeah, well, it can be. Um, it, did you just get married kind of recently? Two years ago. Two years ago. Yeah, yeah. yeah two years, two years ago. Man, Crazy. So, you know, we, we, we kind of have a thing before we go on stage every night, kind of, you know, we, we call it, we're going in, we're going into battle, yeah, <laughs> us yeah, four. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, we, we, especially when you really hear stories, what, what you're doing out here and the difference, you know, because it's so easy in everyday touring life, you just kind of go through the routine, you get into the venue, change your clothes, get up, play a show, go to the bus, go to sleep. So when we hear stories of you know how you're really um, impacting people, yeah. and and what, what literally what you've how you've changed their life or, or what you've what you've done to help them that that kind of I mean and, that you motivates know, skillet, you like crazy. I, I gotta tell you, man, um, Skillet has inspired me many times in my life. Um, oh, man, yeah. You know, I've uh, it's actually one of my favorite bands. So you know, it's really oh, cool, cool that you know we're yeah. here today. Um, and I love what you guys are doing out there. You know, music nowadays, it's almost kind of like about me, 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 you know? Mm -hmm. And the thing I like about Skillet is they write music that helps people and it encourages people. And it's, it's, it, you know, gives them hope and it, it points them to faith, you know? Totally. And I, I really think that, um, you know, there's not a lot of bands that are doing that. You know, I grew up back in the Striper days and, oh, yeah. you know, totally, <laughs> well, you know, it's like, yeah, it's like, that's so well, that's well said. Yeah. It's but a, yeah, that's that. Yeah. So that's, that's a huge motivator for sure. All right. Yeah. Olga, um, just asked about different countries, what it's like in different countries and what Let's have you. See, yeah, we, this is our last question. Let's see here. What she said. Oh, that I, that's cool. I went too far. All right. It's, um, what you it's curious which country most interesting for Seth and why. Were fans more crazy at the concerts and flight with the band members, like in Russia? We're yeah, Russia. we we know you, Olga. Um, Russia's great for us. It's uh, we, <laughs> we still kind of don't believe things have gone how they've gone there, you know. But it's uh, it, yeah, it's crazy. Uh, they're very very passionate fans. Um, very very uh, very nice. Yeah. Very nice people. Sweet people. 
in Russia. Um, so it is different from America, I would yeah. say for sure. sure. Um, yeah, but yeah, man. In Russia, they love some. They love some skillet for sure. Yeah, yeah. We when we love our Russian fans. We love being able to go over there and and uh, you know get back to them as much as possible. Hopefully, we'll be back. I'm not sure when yet, but I'm sure it'll be sooner than later. <laughs> cool. Well, hey, dude, we gotta wrap it up. But um, thanks everybody for watching. Guitar players of Google Plus, Seth Morrison from Skillet, yes. and be sure to check them out on the Winter Jam Tour 2015. Got some shows left, so uh, go see him. Thanks. This is uh, this is kind of one of my main guitars. It's just a 25-inch scale single cut, uh, PRS charcoal burst, um, and it has the uh, their new they call them the metal pickups in it right now. So I'm just trying those guys out. This is one of my favorites. Uh, coil tapped, love it. Uh, that's that's my drop B guitar. So it's got some thick strings on. I think it's a 60 on the bottom, so you know. Somebody had asked before about tunings. Uh, yeah. Do you, how many tunings do we, you guys we use? We in normally a show? use four. I'm only using three on this tour. Um, this is drop B. Yeah. Um, and then this is my drop C sharp. Yeah. Um, it's just uh, their platinum, platinum finish. Yeah. It's cool. And I got the metal pickups in that as well. Yeah. I normally have a drop C. Uh, I'm not using on this tour. Yeah, it's a beautiful guitar though. It's a it's called a Yellow Tiger finish. It's yeah, one yeah, of my yeah. favorites. And then this is my uh, this is my drop D and standard. It's the uh, this is the Tremonti model. Um, it's in black black cherry, and uh, it's got the, the the tremolo on it. But I blocked it off yeah. because I don't use it, and I found that I lay my hand across there. I, know, I do the same. And puts yeah. it up too. Puts it up too, and. Uh, my tech just grabbed this. Uh, here's the, uh, thanks, Charlie. This is the drop C guitar. This is that's a pretty guitar. It's a uh, this is a ten top actually in uh, yellow tiger. And this is my drop C guitar. So on my drop B, I'll play songs like uh, Monster, Whispers in the Dark, Comatose. Uh, drop C sharp will be like Rebirthing, Not Gonna Die. Uh, drop D is like Awaken Alive. Those nights. Or a couple, and then drop C. We'll do Rise, uh, Circus for a Psycho. When we do that live, uh, so yeah, that's my touring guitars. Then uh, right now on this tour, we're doing this little. Yeah, I saw that. I saw the uh, video of you playing yeah. the banjo. We do we do a little like acoustic Mumford and Sons type type yeah. uh, version of those nights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm yeah, using, I saw I'm using that. a banjo on this tour. So, so hey, uh, that's from your hee haw roots. That's right? it. There you yeah. go, hee haw. That's where man. it's coming back. So yeah, those are my touring guitars. That's cool. All right, well thanks, Seth. Yeah, man. All right.